Do you want to sew with gorgeous lightweight fabrics, but you're worried that they might be a little see-through? Then this video is for you. So here's the backstory. A week ago, I posted my latest Rhapsody dress with a lining, and I got a ton of questions about how I installed that lining. So this video is all about that. We're gonna talk about why to use a lining, some fabric options for lining, a couple different ways to install a lining, but a focus on my favorite way um, because it is the quickest and easiest, um, and a complete alternative to lining, and then also some patterns that work really well with linings in the Love Notions collection. And of course, I will show how uh, a lining can be applied to today's feature pattern, Sonata Dress. You can find all the links to these patterns in the box below, or you can check out lovenotions.com where we have a $5 weekly special. So today's little lesson on lining can help take your sewing projects to the next level, and it can also help you feel even more comfortable in your makes. So whether you're a beginner or a seasoned uh, and experienced sewist, using a lining in your garments can totally elevate the quality and the finish of your creations. So let's dive in and learn how to sew with a lining. So technically, what exactly is a lining? So a lining is basically just a separate layer of fabric that's added to the inside of a garment. That's really all a lining is. Um, a lining could be used on everything from dresses to skirts to blazers and definitely in coats. Uh, there are a lot of different reasons to use a lining, so let's cover the why behind a lining right now. So first of all, linings could just be used to provide comfort, durability, opacity, and they can even help you get a really professional looking interior finish. Uh, for example, a lining on the inside of Octave Coat covers up all of those threads and seam allowances, and it really makes your piece look high end from the inside out. Um, it not only can make your garment more comfortable to like slip into, but it can also, um, especially when it comes to dresses and lightweight fabric, which is what this video is a lot about, um, prevent them from clinging to your body. It makes them easier to get on, it makes them less see-through, and in some cases, aligning could even extend the life of the garment that you're wear wearing with, um, especially if you're dealing with a really finicky or a really delicate fabric. So for this video, we're gonna focus on linings for more lightweight projects, not like coats. Um, we're gonna focus on dresses and tops. Um, and you should know that there is a whole world of lining fabric and lining purses and purposes and ways to line things when it comes to like suiting and coats and interlinings and all of that stuff. So now that we know what lining is, how do you know if you need a lining for your project? So here are a few situations you might find yourself in that might call for a lining. So you might use a lining when you want a garment to be more comfortable. A lining can make garments easier to wear, um, especially when you're using fabrics that might be itchy or irritating against your skin, you might want a lining. Um, or even if you want to have like that extra layer of fabric to help the garment not cling to your body. Um, especially if you're using a really lightweight fabric. Um, that extra silky layer can really smooth out and just be really pleasant to wear. Just, you should be aware that a lining is not a good fit for lots of different types of garments. So you should really think through which particular sewing pieces make sense to have a garment installed in them when it comes to fit and style. Um, another reason for using a lining, um, specifically for a bodice is that you no longer need to use a facing. So a facing is that like extra smaller lining piece that you would install on the interior of a garment um, and it helps you finish off like an opening like for a neckline. So Sonata has a neckline and you can see that you can either sew the facing to the front or you can sew it to the inside and you can even top stitch it 
to the front and really set it off either on the inside or the outside. But sometimes that facing piece um, only just lines the first few inches into the garment. So it's not gonna provide any extra coverage. Um, and sometimes facings can be just a little bit finicky to work with um, in terms of you know, you have to understitch and sometimes you'll have to top stitch around them and getting them to like lie flat inside the garment and not peek out can sometimes be a challenge. Another situation might call for a lining if you want to increase the durability. So lining can add strength and longevity to your garments because it can prevent them from wearing out or tearing easily, especially if you're working with a really delicate fabric. So that's another reason why you might want to install a lining on your piece. And lastly, you would definitely want to use some type of lining and it's opacity. So I love a lightweight woven fabric, but unfortunately garments that are made from sheer or lightweight fabrics can become very see-through. And I personally don't really sometimes realize that until I've already sewn it up and I'm wearing it and I step into the sunshine and I'm like, oh no. Um, a lining can help you um, prevent yourself from accidentally showing off a little bit more than you had planned on. So let's talk about a few different fabric options for lining. So when you go to shopping for lining, you might want to look for these qualities in a lining fabric. And some of them are pretty obvious and some of them are a little bit more specific, but there are a lot of fabrics that would make a great lining and some that would make a terrible lining. So for almost all of the linings, you're probably gonna want something that has at least a few of the following characteristics. Thin, silky, breathable, slippery, wrinkle resistant, and strong. At least for lightweight dresses and tops, you are not going to likely want a lining fabric that is itchy, thick, heat trapping, very textured, or easily misshapen. And again, at least for a lightweight woven dress or top lining, clearly we are not going to line um, your garment with a stretchy knit fabric. So we want the lining fabric and the main fabric to have similar properties to each other in terms of their stretch and their recovery. So you want to make sure that those are a good match. So if you're going shopping for lining fabric, here are a couple search terms that you might want to use to find lining fabric. Um, and some, also some things to consider when you're trying to find the right lining fabric to accompany your lightweight woven main fabric. So one term is acetate, and this is a smooth, shiny fabric and it drapes well, but it doesn't really breathe very well in my experience. Um, but this is a type of fabric that would be probably more appropriate for a coat like Octave or like the fur version of the Oakley vest. Another term to search for would be peach skin. This is a fabric that has a little bit of texture, so you want to be careful with that, but it's typically really white, lightweight and really drapey. Um, another term would be polyester. Um, this is a type of fabric that is affordable, it's durable, it's really easy to care for, and it really is suitable for a lot of different types of garments. So, you would want to, when you're searching for it, look in the description for it of the product and see if it has any sort of listing as far as it being appropriate for a lining. Another term to search for would be rayon or vicose fabrics. Um, those are fabrics that are really lightweight, but they aren't always super durable, so keep that in mind. Um, for example, a rayon chalet is so pretty um, oftentimes, but sometimes it can be a really shifty to sew with, so just a heads up about that. Another lining fabric is silk. It's luxurious, it's natural. A silk lining is so elegant and it could be perfect for special occasion garments, but they are really expensive and they can be really shifty and hard to sew. And then cotton is another term. Cotton is natural, it's breathable, it's comfortable, and a cotton lining could be great for more casual garments or if you're working with other natural fibers. So you wanna make sure that a cotton as a lining is a little bit of a thinner, drapier version. You're not gonna to wanna to line a lightweight dress usually with like a quilter's cotton. It's just not gonna be very comfortable. Now let's talk about a couple styles of lining. Um, there's different ways to achieve a lining and 
there's lots of different ways to match up your fabric and your lining together in terms of sewing. Um, and that just really depends on what you need. But I'm gonna focus mostly on my personal favorite style because it's the easiest. Um, but if you really wanna go like next level with your lining um, for your dress or your top, you could do a full attached lining. This would mean that the entire garment from bodice to sleeves to skirt is lined. And basically on the inside of the garment, all the seam allowances are covered up by that separate lining piece. So like the lining and the main fabric are wrong sides together so that you can't see any interior seams from the outside or even if you look on the inside of the lining. In some cases, this means that you sew almost an exact replica of the garment, and then you attach it in a few different areas. But keep in mind that you're gonna have to do a little work around with zippers and any other openings or closures. A full attached lining typically means that you're gonna have some hand sewing to do to get everything arranged correctly, um, especially around the hems because you're gonna need the lining to not pop out through the openings. So um, this approach can be a lot of extra work and it can present some potential fit, you know, fitting challenges depending on the original pattern, but it's a really high level way to do a lining. Now, another approach is a quick lining. And I've also seen the version of this that's sometimes called underlining and then another twist on it might be like self lining um, and in my experience those are all kind of different versions of a similar process and this is my personal favorite way to do a lining because I am all about what works easily and doesn't take a ton of extra time or resources so this is a little bit of a shortcut with great results so for a quick lining or what I call a quick lining I basically just cut two of the pattern pieces that need to be lined one out of the main fabric and one out of the lining fabric. And then I combine those just right sides together before I do any sewing. And then I could base them together. I could just clip them together. And then I treat those pieces as one throughout the rest of my sewing process. I just follow all the directions, just having two layers. So for example, here is a Sonata dress that I lined. Um, it was made in um, a sheer kind of Swiss dot. And so I wanted to be more comfortable wearing it. So when I was making this one, I just cut two of each pattern piece except for the sleeves because I wanted those to say sheer. So on the inside, I used a layer of this like silky poly fabric in the matching color. Now I've also quick lined this Vivace Dolman. This is a lightweight floral. Um, and in this case, the main fabric was already a really great lightweight for a lining. So I just doubled it all up. Um, and now when you use a pattern fabric like this, you're gonna need to keep in mind just how much of that design is gonna show through from the lining fabric. And it might be more distracting than you intend. So if that's the case for your pattern fabric, you might wanna use a solid on the inside instead. Now, I've also done uh, a quick lining for my most recent Rhapsody dress. And what I did with this one is I just lined the main bodice and not the sleeves. And then for the most part, I just treated all these pieces like one after I matched them together and I just followed the directions in the pattern. Um, except instead of finishing the neckline with bias tape like the pattern calls for, I simply just sewed the neckline of the main fabric and the neckline of the lining fabric right sides together to finish off that neckline. And then I treated the lining and the main fabrics like one from that point. So um, for the skirt on this one, I created a shorter but uh, less wide partial lining for the skirt, um, just like I did for this purple Sonata. Um, and it just, I wanted to use less fabric because I wanted to have a closer fitting skirt on the inside for the lining, but a really wide and extra kind of gathered skirt on the outside. But I didn't want to add more volume on the inside, more than it was necessary. So, Keep in mind that you could also do a version of quick lining, but you could change the length of the lining on the skirt to not use so much fabric for your lining. So that's what I did with this black 
Rhapsody. And I like that because you're only lining what's absolutely necessary. So for the skirt on this one is much shorter. It goes up to my mid thigh and it didn't really take any extra time or fabric to do that. Um, and I like the way that fits. So the Sonata dress, I also did that. I finished the bodice exactly as the instructions, but I added a shorter lining inside of this skirt. Um, and that gave me the coverage where I felt that it was needed. So I did this by just cutting an extra skirt out of the same fabric just much shorter. And then I sew those skirt lining pieces right sides together. I finished the hem with just a quick surge. So there wasn't extra bulk from like a hem. Um, and then I basted it at the top of that finished skirt and then attached the bodice together. Um, I love the, the way that these pieces have extra coverage, but only where I need it. And it didn't require like a ton of extra time or fabric. Okay, but what if you don't want to mess with all the extra sewing steps and fabric for a lining? So here is my suggestion, and I sort of feel as if I'm giving advice to someone from the 1950s, but I suggest making something like a slip. So this approach is great in my opinion because you can use a slip with all of the different makes. You don't have to do it inside of just that one garment. So for example, with this Rhapsody, it was slightly sheer, um, but it's kind of textured. So I didn't want that extra um, texture all over for the lining. So I didn't have any other matching silky thin fabric to match that Rhapsody. So I just whipped up this Luna 90, it's Luna loungewear. Um, and this makes a great slip. And all I did was make sure that it was shorter than my dress. Um, I skipped the hem altogether because it's knit and it's not gonna fray. And then I used um, this Pico elastic to finish the straps and then obviously the neckline in the back. So this is made in a fabric that's kind of similar to like a, a ITY, like a silky lightweight fabric. So it's perfect for slipping on under my potentially sheer lightweight woven projects without having to install a lining. So do you love the idea of practicing with a lining? Here is a roundup of a few dress patterns in the Love Notions collection that are ideal for lightweight wovens and that could benefit from or work really well with the lining depending on the fabric you choose. So here, are the, here they are. Cadence top and dress, Sonata dress obviously, the Rhapsody Blouse and Dress, Vivace Dolman, Tempo Sundress, and Lyric Dress and Peplum. So that's just a little lesson on lining lightweight dresses and tops. I hope you have fun making exactly what you need and exactly what feels good to you, um, from the sewing to the fitting and everything in between. Um, aligning can be a great way to make your projects a tad more professional, but also give some functional benefits like opacity. <laughs> and if you aren't into linings, but you definitely want a non-see-through outfit, um, make sure to try out that slip with the Luna Loungewear 90. This would be a great pattern to add to your wish list for our upcoming spring sale at the beginning of May. So all the links are down below and you should totally check out Today's feature pattern, the Sonata dress. It has lining instructions with it and it's perfect with or without a lining depending on your fabric. Um, it also includes cup sizes. It has sizing extra small to 5X. Um, there's no closures and it has a really lovely A-line skirt and a really beautiful shaping throughout the bodice without being uncomfortable. Um, I love that keyhole neckline where you can experiment with ways to finish with the facing or top stitching or all of those coordinating fabrics. So I can't wait to see yours. Make sure to post your makes in our pattern support group and join there to get a lots of more sewing support. Also, here is a quick sneak peek at our latest pattern. It is just about to release. This is the Lennox top crop dress and bodysuit. Isn't it so cool? Um, I am really excited for it. So make sure you get on our newsletter to see when it comes out um, and all the details about the release sale. I hope you have a great day and happy sewing.